with Jimmy from Bound for Greatness. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Congratulations on your film uh, and the nominations. Thank you very much. Now, I have a whole slew of questions which I can sort of um, dive into, but it's always the same first one, which is um, where did the idea come from? How, does, how did this germinate from, from the start? Where, where's the idea from? Um, I really like films about um, underdogs and films where the regular guy or girl doesn't really get a chance in life mm. and, and see how they, when, when the world is on top of them, how do they kind of push out from underneath that rock and, and how do they succeed and how do they live their life and still be happy? You know, and, and it may be different from what's, what happiness is for you and me, and I think that's the interesting part. Right, so it's just the start of the story. This is where the idea came from. Yeah. And, and was it always going to be a short? Uh, it always was going to be a short. I, I was doing it for the Warner Brothers directing program. Lovely. And they have a lovely program, and I knew that I needed to do something that was more current because I've done several shorts. Mm. And um, it's it's quite a big short. It's it's almost 30 minutes. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, I thought, well, I'll, I'll make it bigger than a short short, but not not a feature quite yet. So, and I always think about um, whenever I think about short any short film, I always think you've got to compress so much into such a short space of time. You do. So does that mean literally everything's got to be? This has got to be of interest. This has got to be of interest to keep the story rolling. Well, so in other words, I know in in, in extending in a feature film, so you can have flabby parts. Yeah. But the, the, a short. How do you keep that um, interest up when you do this? How do you make it so you every every few seconds, like, yeah, what's coming next? What's coming next? It must be very difficult. I'm sure it's different for, for everyone, obviously. Um, now, my, my day trade is I'm an editor, and I work on a t TV series. And so, for me, that's my job, is I put it all together. I mm. show and work with the director, and then once you get it there, you feel like, where are the flabby parts, and you lift it out. But when you're speaking of a short film, um, I try to do that from the beginning and work it with my writer, and, and the two of us work together and try to lift out the flabby parts. And it was a much longer script, and you have to be realistic in what's important and what's not important. Yeah. And you still shoot things that are not important. So, because there's always three types of film. There's the one you write, the one you shoot, and the one you edit. And they all look a bit different. So you have to really take off different hats. And so I had to take off my director hat because I also edited the film. And I had to be open to other people's suggestions and say, we got to get to the end faster. So you got to cut this bit and this bit. And so it's difficult. But That's yeah. interesting because you're an editor. Yeah. For, I mean, uh, you're first and foremost an editor. So you, you would presumably normally be the guy that goes into other people's films and chop them. And they're the people behind you going, oh shit, I've spent all this time doing this and you're cutting my film. Yeah. But now it's converse. Now you're sitting there thinking, I really don't want to cut this part. Yeah. But you've got to have someone there to say, no, no, we, you know, I, I mean, I don't know, but I'm guessing, you know, you now need someone to say, well, we don't need that in there. Yeah. And well, how difficult was that to, to square? It's hard because it becomes your baby. Yeah. And you don't want to, and you don't <laughs> want to kill babies, you know? No, no, no. And so, so when you do a film like that and you're, you're putting it together, you have to bring in people that you trust, that you know that you've worked with before. And you've had to go through that process together, and, and, and it's just a trusted process. And then you, when you finally get into your editor mind, you think, ah, it's, he or she is right. we we got to keep, you know, nip this, nip that, and there you go. So, and You didn't have too much stress doing that. I mean, it was just all flow through. Yes, you know, and then I've, I've seen it probably several hundred times at this point. You know, and every time I, I look at it now, I think, oh, I wish we got on a bit quicker here and here. But... Sometimes it's nice to have it sit in the moment too. So I don't know. It, it's very hard for me as the filmmaker to, to say that, and only the the audience can take a look. And luckily, I had some great response from it. And P, it, the best response that I've gotten from multiple people is, "We'd like to see it as a feature." So I feel uh, like yeah. when you leave someone with wanting more, that's always a good thing. So you, I, I know we've sp spoken uh, about this. This could be a feature, or it could be a series. Is is that correct? Yeah, I, I would really see it more as a feature. Um, um, a series, it could definitely happen. I hadn't thought about it as a series until we had spoken. Yeah. And I think that's a great, interesting idea. Um, but maybe I would do a feature first and then think about breaking it into a series if there was interest from that. Um, because that's what really my next step is, is, is trying to do a feature. And now, did, did you... Was the intention always to move on to directing, or, or did it just evolve over a period of time? Well, that's the hard thing. I think as a filmmaker, you start and, you know, you, you, if, if you go to film school or if you talk to people, everyone says they want to direct. And you, you see quickly the, realis the realistic aspect of, of who's going to be a director and who's not going to be. And I feel like at heart, I always wanted to be a director, but I never knew how to get there. And uh, in talking to people, they said editing is the best way. And I think it really uh, is one of the best ways. There's many good ways to do it because I'm at the end of the day, it's it's me and a director working together, and I get to collaborate and I get to see what did that person do right or wrong. So then I can take that from me as a director and do it right. And as I'm shooting, I can think 
I'm here, I have a close up on you. I wanna have now a wide shot of the two of us sitting here. And I'm already thinking in those, those, those terms to tell the best story. And that's from the editing a aspect. So when I shoot it, I'm trying to think backwards. I mean, they must have to really implicit their trust in you because at the end, at the end of the day, they spent a hell of who knows how long making this film. Then they're sitting with you in the editing room. And you're saying, "No, that doesn't work. We need to cut that." And I mean, that is a huge responsibility because this director might be saying, "Whoever is, are you kidding me?" And you're, you've got to persuade him to do that. Yeah. I mean, how are, you, are they generally? They do they generally listen to your advice, or is it fifty-fifty? How does that work? Um, well, if you look at all first-time filmmakers, like uh, let's say Chris Nolan, for instance, Chris Nolan had an Academy Award-winning uh, editor. Um, she came on, Dodie Dorn, and she edited his one of his first movies, Memento. And look, they won the Academy Award yeah. for that, and it got him great notoriety. And if you look at other first-time directors, they need a good editor because at the end of the day, that's what an editor is as a storyteller that takes all the pieces, and it's a bit like a big jigsaw puzzle yeah. that can go together in a hundred different ways. But you're trying to have an editor that can help you put it together in the best way that makes the best picture. And so, yes, there has to be a lot of trust between the two. And sure, there's some fights that happen, but um, at the end of the day, um, hopefully the editor is there to tell the best story and help collaborate. Right. And that's all it is, is collaboration. So. And what, <clears throat> even with all your experience, before you started making your own films, mm -hmm. did you fall into any traps? Or do you think, oh, I wasn't expecting that, even though you know, you've been in the industry for a long time? And when you say traps, meaning? Well, everyone tries to plan for every eventuality, don't they? I'm yeah. sure it's the same filmmaking. But was there anything you, that sort of sticks in your mind and you just wasn't expecting and you didn't see coming? In, in making my own yeah. film? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for instance, um, uh, with, with my film, it, it starts out on a beach. Yeah. And um, it took forever planning the pre-production. Lovely so visuals hard. on the beach. I remember that. Yeah. when they're walking along. Yeah. Yeah, and and I had all these design shots on the day, and and it was already going to be a tight day because we really should have had two days at the beach, but we only had one. And I look at the week before, and it said zero percent chance of rain. I think lovely. This is going to be great. And it was December, oh. and then two days later, it said ten percent chance of rain. Twenty, thirty, forty. The day before, ninety percent chance of rain. I didn't plan for that. And you get there on the day, and it's you know just a light mist. You think we can do this? This will be fine. You start out, and you have your young boy sitting there, and he's shivering, and it's cold, and it's raining on him. Feel terrible, and um, you get through those shots, and some things don't work because you got to move quickly. And then all of a sudden, you get on the beach, and you've got winds that make your beach this big down to this big, and your actors are getting wet, and your camera team can't fight it, and the rain's coming down hard, and you have to change your whole plan. And you now have to go back in your head, and you have to think, how do I tell the story? All it is is trying to get the information, but have good visuals of two people walking down the beach and get to the next scene. And I just had to try to figure out that. So yes, things in the moment can change depending on what control you have and what you don't. But that's where I took my abilities and I hope I told it the best way I could. Um, sure, I would have loved to have gone in and had some lovely tight shots in here and there, but I just did a nice two shot as they walked up and you know that's, that's all I had time for. And, and when you were there wearing the director's hat, really, have you done mum saying the buck stops for you doesn't it really I, I pretty much get because yeah. ultimately the decisions on set you know if there's an issue there's a problem they are fine they can have to come to you pretty much aren't they you know it's just, it yeah but but I, I do I do have to have an open ear with my assistant director and you know he he on the day was saying you know we, we've got to move on I know you want this perfect but we got to move on and then I've got to fight myself and say did I get the best version I can or is it good enough so we can move on and even if we didn't can't, I just know that we have to keep this thing moving because if I miss one step, we, we might not be able to shoot one scene, which will ruin everything. So yes, it does end with me, but I have to be trusting in the people that I've hired to work with because, again, it's all collaboration at the end of the day. So, and that's why well, that's what makes a good filmmaker. I think ninety percent of it is casting and the crew around you. The rest of it is showing up and just being a leader. And how did you cast? How, how did that process? Happen. Well, I was really lucky to get Karen Gillan, but um, uh, first I got the my, my lead actor, Keir O'Donnell. Yeah. Uh, I worked on the series The Mentalist for years, yeah. and uh, that helped because then people think, oh, this this is a serious person. They work on a serious yeah. show. Yeah. And he, he said, I love the script, but I would love a strong female to work with. So I worked with our casting director at The Mentalist. Her name is Kendra Patterson, and she was lovely. And she said, here, let me present you a, a few people. And she brought this list, and I saw Karen Gillan, I thought... That name's familiar. <laughs> and, you know, Doctor Who is a huge show, and um, but I'd only seen a few episodes. So then I looked her up, and I thought, oh, yeah, that's Karen from, from Doctor Who. And I thought, she's interested? And she said, yeah, she thinks it's a lovely script. So I thought, well, all we can say, all, all we can do is ask her. 
And um, and she says, yeah, it works in my timing. We'd love to do it. But she says, there's one thing. Oh, I've nice. just finished Guardians of the Galaxy. They've shaved my head, and it's just growing out. If you don't mind me with short hair, it'll be the only project I do with short hair. And I thought, no, I don't mind. It actually works well with the character, and I think it'll be an interesting look at you as an actress um, in a different take than with your beautiful long hair. So I was, it was timing. It worked out well, and... Yeah, and that's on screen. I mean, so really, I, as you know, I've seen the film. I really love the film. And Thank you. I know when you said about it could be, it could move on to be a series, or be, it, it's quite obvious how you could do that and, and move it on. Yeah. You know, and I can see that. Um, so what's next? What can? What I mean, I, I assume you've got loads of projects on the go now at the moment. Or because I know you've got, I don't want to say a, a full t a day job, but. <laughs> I'm assuming you're looking at other things and planning for other things at the moment. I, I am. I work on the, the new series for Fox Rosewood, which is lovely and, and a good show to work with, the good good people. So um, I hope to continue working there, but also I need to do a feature, and that's what's been nice at this festival, as you hear voices of people say, we want you to do a feature of this, and I've already talked to my, my leads, Kieran Karen, and they said they'd like to work together. So if I can pull together the best script possible, whether it's it's the feature version of this or a feature of something else, um, I think it's just continuing to make something bigger, and that's that's how you grow as a filmmaker. You you can't stand on one thing; you just have to continue making and yeah. and try. So. And could you uh, again? I know we talked this. Can you explain how this works with the program? I know you said you made it a short, and this this is all part of a, a grand scheme that you have to do in a certain order. Is that correct? Uh, for the the director's program. Yeah. Uh, well, for the director's program, I I had some some friends of mine that had gotten through uh, at Warner Brothers, and I thought. Well, all I can do is make something the best I can and try to submit it. I yeah. didn't know I'd get in for sure. But yeah. That's all I could do. And I was lucky to get in. And um, and then using this to get into the, the directing program, I went through the program where I, I learned more, got to work with actors on the stages at Warner Brothers. And now that's opened up some doors of, of possibilities. And Warner Brothers you know, not, has now certified me as, as being one of their directors, yeah, which is lovely. Yeah. And then that's why I thought, well, I've done this nice short. And it's probably a bit too long for festivals, but I'll try to, to, to get it out. And again, thank you for, for letting it in this festival. And um, But it, it's it's been a nice thing to just be able to do it for one project, but then also be able to share it with other people at festivals. So Brilliant. Yeah. Jimmy, thank hey, you very thank much. Hey, thank you. Cheers. I need you to think, who played it? Who played it and enjoyed it in 1921, 1922? My mind goes there and I think about those people who are most likely dead now, but they sat and, and listened or danced or fought or made love to this record. Routine and order. Yeah, there's, there's power in that, there's comfort in that. I think I'm crazy, huh? I have Asperger's, they say. So? I'm on the spectrum. I must be on some spectrum somewhere, too, I think.